Hello, this is Hello. our final interview. <laughs> Hello, Normandy. Uh, this is our final interview um, for the Howl Round of all the harp artists. There's a whole series of them. Uh, thank you for watching. If you've been watching them, um, there you I, you know already they're extraordinary, and uh, Normandy is no exception to that. Uh, the harp program is, uh, if you don't know. Uh, 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 residency artist program at the Hero Art Center, where um, artists, uh, all different kinds of artists, puppeteers, uh, musicians, theater artists, video artists are given um, space and time and um, peer support and fellowship uh, to advance their careers, but primarily also to work on a particular piece of art for um, any any number of years that they really want to. Uh, if Kristen Martin, who started it, she she knew that the three week model of the American theater uh, <laughs> didn't really work for most artists. <laughs> um, and so she um, created this program many years ago. I've certainly been a benefit uh, beneficiary of it. And um, and we're here with a, a harp artist right now. Um, so Normandy, why don't you, we don't know each other really, so why don't you introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about your project. Okay, um, so I'm Normandy Sherwood. I'm um, a director and a designer and a writer, and I do a lot of different things in the theater. And my heart project is called Psychic Self-Defense. Um, and the like the quick pitch of the show is that, um, or the challenge of the show is that it will include 45 minutes of curtains opening. And, uh, yes. and that's sort of where yes. it starts. <laughs> oh, that's my fantasy. <laughs> It's like all I ever want theater to be. I try to make that show every single time I make a piece of theater. And every single time I end up having a narrative. But all, all I want is curtains opening. So how are you actually doing it? <laughs> well, I feel like that's like, man, that's like the, that's the struggle that I am facing is how, yeah. do, you, how do you not have the narrative wants to creep in. And so I feel like I'm well, you know, I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm not saying narrative is wrong. I'm just saying like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you, because I've read the thing on the psychic. So tell people what what it was inspired by or based on and, and, uh, and what the, I guess you could call it a goal of the pieces. Yeah. So, um, so uh, it was inspired partly by this vision of the 45 minutes of curtains opening, but also by this, um, 1930s sort of um, paranormal self-help book called Psychic Self-Defense by Dion Fortune, which is, um, well, it's a book that's about sort of like how to defend your psyche from the attacks of like ghosts or psychic vampires or other magicians, <laughs> other supernatural. Like, pundits. Pundits. Well, exactly. So when I read that, I was like, that's funny. But then I was like, well, but actually this, I really want to be able to practice psychic self-defense because I think there are a lot of psychic vampires, um, you know, abroad in the world and, uh, you know, uh, corporations that want to hijack my attention and your attention and uh, all different ways that I think we, we might feel under attack. So, so part of the impulse for the show was to figure out like how can, uh, to explore that idea and, may, and hopefully figure out a show that can be some sort of, um, um, practice of psychic self-defense or like antidote to the psychic hijacking. So uh -huh. that's where the curtains come in. I think. And what what are the techniques in the book that they suggest? And how does that apply to how have you then turned that into curtains opening? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the frustrating thing about the book is that um, there aren't a lot of concrete techniques. It is oh, it's just all stories theory. about <laughs> times that the writer was attacked. Uh, the, uh, yes. the most concrete <laughs> technique is that if um, if someone is trying to bully you, you should stare at the space right between their eyes, and then they won't be, have any power over you. That's the one kind of concrete, but that's not even supernatural, really. Uh, uh, and I'm not quite sure that works. No. <laughs> I think I tried that technique when I was 10, and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other funny thing about that book is that a lot of the things that she describes, like looking at it through like a contemporary lens, you're like, this person is in an abusive relationship, and that's what the paranormal thing that she's describing uh -huh. is. So yeah. there's sort of like yeah. an, yeah, uh, an interesting slant to read it as well. Uh -huh. um, but there's these kind of ghosts 
hanging around you when you're in an abusive relationship. <laughs> or you're attributing, you know, uh, like, you know, um, feelings of discomfort to ghosts when maybe they're actually like in a relationship situation. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> the total opposite of what I would say. So, so then, so you read this book and you're just inspired. Uh, and, and so then lead me to curtains. <laughs> so the curtains, I would say the curtains are like developing independently. And then the two things sort of run together. And I think the curtains are, um, well, to me, the way the curtains offer a type of practice of psychic self-defense is, um, uh, uh, the desire to create a, create a show that is like, um, keeps the audience in a state of anticipation and sort of absorption about what's going to happen next. Uh -huh. So um, uh, thinking about like creating a very like visual sensory experience that is about sort of the being in the present moment of anticipation, I guess, and that yeah. that, um, that that offers some sort of um, antidote to being grabbed in different directions away from yourself. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it seems meditative and uh, just the idea of it, it seems very cleansing. <laughs> like, and, and I guess I, I wonder about the existential um, uh, 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 condition of being in a in a place watching curtains open for forty five minutes. Uh, is right. that is that is that in any way some kind of uh, uh, psychic self defense? <laughs> Just to be in existentialism. <laughs> Yes, to be to to get through the different cycles of, um, you know, being being bored and being absorbed and being bored and being absorbed, um, yeah, but yeah. that's like part of the challenge is like forty five minutes of curtains opening. Like, how do you make it? I mean, bearable in a certain way, or how do you make it like continue to pull people in? Yeah. Um, so that's well. There's a whole Japanese art form that is just screens opening. That Basil uh, made a show, but he put a narrative into the show. But it's uh, Basil Twist, but it's just, there's a whole, on some island, he did all the research, I can't remember the actual language for it, but um, it's really just screens opening over and over and over again, <laughs> which, so there's a tradition, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> there's, you know, I don't know if there's yeah, footage. There's also like maybe sort of a burlesque element of it, just the sort mm -hmm. of constant reveal and, I mean, teasing of whatever is gonna be behind yeah. the curtain. Yeah, and are you, I, yeah, how, what, to what degree is surprise an element in this work? Um, like surprising the audience or surprising? Surprising the audience, surprising you, surprising, yeah. I mean, to what degree is uh, a curtain opens and it's the exact same curtain or it's a curtain that looks different and, and yeah. Well, I think, or yeah, it's, it's about building surprise. I mean, you know, it, in a way it's sort of like you're building to punchlines that kind of like, uh -huh. cascade right like um you always want it to be like there's something worthwhile behind the curtain but also like uh maybe you have to build up to the worthwhile curtain we're kind of playing around with that uh-huh um i mean i think it's all about surprise that's what curtains opening is what's behind the curtain yeah yeah and, and i mean i know every time i, I always want to have a curtain in my shows and every time i i do the designers always kind of freak out. There's always a moment of like, and people are always game to do it, but there's always a moment of, oh my God, technically it's so challenging <laughs> to have a curtain. And also for downtown artists, you know, it can be very expensive curtains. And so what, how are you, how are you um, uh, doing gymnastics around all of that? <laughs> like having the technical things of having all, I mean, I imagine you have to have um a thousand uh, riggings <laughs> in order to do this right well so the work that we've done on the show so far has been very like technically oriented like uh -huh. we were uh we were able to do some work uh last summer in the here space in a very socially distanced way and it was all about just figuring out strategies for the rigging and uh -huh. what, what can we make and how do we want to make it um but, you know, I mean, I think like in this sort of scrappy downtown way, we're like, we're using, we're repurposing a lot of things. Uh, yeah, yeah. Using a lot of materials for the arts fabric and um, like the vast store of curtains I have from other shows. So I think we're kind of <laughs> trying to see what we can make. 
out of what we have and um and also i wish i had all my curtains still i'd give them to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <laughs> so you have worked with so many different kinds of artists uh, you have a really eclectic kind of career and yet when i when i um uh, look at imagery uh, of your work uh, there's a, a, a clear a kind of aesthetic um, uh, vision and could you just maybe describe what what you're you, you obviously are bringing that to all the various projects that you you work on and so just describe your your aesthetics and and I guess also to some degree um, what aesthetics maybe mean to you yeah. well I guess I would say that like my uh, uh, biggest aesthetic influence is um, materials. Like I'm really interested in like the potential of a weird material to do something cool. And I'm really interested in things that are handmade and look handmade. Like that's, um, you know, that's what gets me excited. In, yeah. And I guess I'm just, I'm really interested in objects and material and like the stuff of the theater that's, um, uh, you know, I'm a writer and a designer, but I think even as a writer, I'm always thinking about the stuff and um, and how the stuff is going to work. <laughs> um, and I guess I would, uh, let's see how to describe the aesthetic. It's like maximal, it's um, very colorful and uh, I, I sort of, um, I used to say that like my forte was like making something out of trash in 20 minutes. And that's still a strong skill I have, but I'm I'm working on like longer timelines, <laughs> still making stuff out of trash. Right. And is that a, do you think that that's um, an economic choice, making things out of trash, or is it just because trash can be so beautiful, and or it's fun to turn something that has been discarded into something that is beautiful? Uh, I, I would say it's like both or all. Like I mean, certainly yeah. in an economic thing, like you know, just kind of um making it do in new york over the years like that's how you do it but yeah. but i don't know i'm really interested in theatrical objects like they're so valuable in the moment of the performance and then they can become trash immediately when the show is over and just like right. that magic trick of the value disappearing or like the transformation that happens i don't know so i think about that a lot like um it makes me want to like bring the trash back into the spotlight <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. Something that was of use that is no longer of use and now is of use again because you decided. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's empowering. Um, can we see a little uh, work sample? Uh, sure. That, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'll show um, I'll share my screen and I'll show like kind of a super cut of um, images from the workshop that we did for the show this summer. All right. Super. Uh, OK. I have determined to master the art of psychic self-defense.
<laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, so, so it's really uh, you're working with hypnosis too, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To to hypnotize people out of um, wanting to buy things, <laughs> <laughs> or just to, to be in a. I mean, it's just like, oh yes, open. I don't know when things open. It it opens you. <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> like so, to get to bathe in opening, opening, opening. Um, are you working with closing as well? Well, uh, no, not as much. I mean, we, no. we were experimenting this summer. We, you know, we did some closing, but it seems like the op the opening is the thing. And what we're trying to figure out is like um, maybe there'll be like a little bit of closing, but like um, opening into different spaces that then disappear when other curtains open behind them. That's the thing we're, we're wanting to work on in our next sort of work period. Yeah, and I love how you're, um, you know, as, like, when you read the blurb of it, uh, all, all I think is the same size curtain and it's just one after another, but you're really, you're branching out. You're like, oh no, we're gonna bring in a little curtain and then we're gonna <laughs> like <laughs> video curtain and physical curtain. And, you know, so you're really experimenting with um, form and and style of material as well. And uh, do, you, do you feel like you're gonna have 5,000 more versions uh, before you actually put it all together? Or do you feel like you're on a on a track to something right now? Um, I think we're still really in like the exploratory phase. Yeah. Um, we spent yeah. a little bit of time, the, the group and I spent a little bit of time um, uh, at a residency uh, without a theater, just sort of um, thinking through some things and playing with some effects. Um, and, uh, and we'll have more time working on it in the theater. I think we're like firmly in the like, try a lot of different things and see what we can uh -huh. do in the phase of this project. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, um, uh, I, I try to keep these by at 30 minutes, so I'm gonna, um, uh, I'm gonna close this off soon. But what I wanted to ask is something I've been asking a lot of the artists, because um, there seems to be a, a social justice, um, uh, a theme of, and this may be just Kristen Marting's curatorial um, desire, or it could be the 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 curators, the the panel that picks all the artists, you know, which changes every year. So I don't think they could all collaboratively get together to decide this. Um, but it seems like most of the artists have some kind of social justice um, anchor in their work, and I'm and I'm wondering is that. Uh, and this this particular one is interesting because the the idea kind of feels that like to freeze people of um, of the bombardment of everyone trying to steal your attention, you know, <laughs> because feels to me like a social justice action. But I wonder, um, but but the 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 actual um, execution of it is much larger than that in some ways. So I wonder about. Um, about how that that plays social justice plays into your desire to even just get involved in a project um because so many people are working that way i certainly tend to work that way too but curious um yeah i mean i think that like i am thinking a lot about like how we collaborate together me and the team and sort of like mm -hmm. what our community agreement is um how i um am working to like uh create a team that uh, is full of dear collaborators of mine, but also bringing in new people is um, uh, trying to like reach toward equity in the theater space. Mm -hmm. um, and then like content wise, I mean, I think that like, yeah, as you say, like in the sort of grand conceptual thing, there is something about like how to sort of like claim ownership of our own attention and um, how to, uh, you know, then be able to deploy that attention in the ways that we need to, how to be like free of certain oppressive structures. Um, but the experience <laughs> of it, I think, um, uh, what I'm interested in the experience of it is sort of an experience of absorption and being mm -hmm. sort of drawn in to, um, I don't know, like the hypnotic place uh as, yeah. as as you're saying as a kind of cleansing and as a kind of like refreshing so i feel like we kind of need that 
these days is like yeah. brain refresh. Yeah. And you're, you're working on this as a, a, a um, forgive me for not knowing, but uh, uh, you are the, the lead artist. Is that how you're defining this? And, and so are you, are you building an ensemble or is it just that um, I always come up with this, with this question too, because I feel like uh, when you apply for the devised grants, you know, you're like, well, I have my ensemble. We've been making work together for years and years and years, but we haven't called it uh, the Wooster Group or something. You know, we haven't called it a, 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 an ensemble name. And so how are you navigating just that? Uh, um, wondering, I hear you talking about <laughs> equity with your <laughs> with the workers and stuff, but also being the, the, the center of the decisions. Um, so, what, what, what's that navigation for you? Well, it's, um, this piece is interesting because I'm, I, I began making theater in a sort of collaborative devised group. And then, yeah, I mean, with the national theater <laughs> of the United States, right? Right. <laughs> like, yes. I mean, that was one of the great titles for a theater company of all time. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, please. Yes, claim it. <laughs> and so, yeah, you started with the, uh, an ensemble and then um, that is, and you branched out. And uh, so, yeah, um, I'll, I, I interrupted you. Oh, no. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's where I started. And then over the last like 10 years, I would say that I've, I've been working, you know, more in the like, um, uh, uh, less device way, I guess, like as the writer, as the director. Um, and this piece is coming from an impulse of like turning to back toward that collaborative work a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I guess I, I am still would claim the lead artist role in this project, but it's much more um, being sort of thought through and developed by the group. And I think, you know, it's the, the quality of the collaboration is changing sort of as we work on it. And I'm interested yeah. in that like emergent property. Yeah, practice. yeah, yeah. It's like um, marketing is not process but it's not devoid of process if that makes sense like like when I, when I have to do a show when I have to do a show when I get to do a show uh they often will want to put my name on it you know um and I and I always think oh okay well if I but <laughs> but that maybe gives me too much weight than what uh than what I want the art to be <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then nobody comes to the show if you just give the title of the show, right? <laughs> so, so I'm, yeah, I, I would love, I would love to collaborate with you on a way to figure out how to convince the rest of the world that right. <laughs> marketing is not a process. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'd also love to collaborate with you one day. So uh, maybe one day we could. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you. Is there anything you need from the community? Do you need money? Do you need um, people to come and um, sew uh, curtains together? Do you need, uh, what, what do you need? What, in case somebody's listening to this, wants to help out. Yeah, I mean, I would say I always want someone to help in our, our sewing bee um, curtain factory <laughs> that we're creating um, <laughs> is uh, it a real sewing bee i mean are you you're getting together with friends and and having cocktails and <laughs> sewing at times i mean mostly it's been limited to the work periods we've had but i'm like seeing that in our future there's like uh -huh. a lot of curtains to sew so yeah there's like a community engagement that who the presenters love that they <laughs> love it when you engage the community <laughs> You can get, you can travel all around the country and have various people sew all your curtains for you. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's what you need. You you want people to join you on that and anything yeah. else? Um. Well, I mean, of course, one always needs money for all sorts of things, but um, yeah. but yeah, but I mean, you know, and I feel like we we figure out all the ways to make that come, um you know uh but i think that like the thing i'm right now like as we're making it and sort of before people can see it although they might um get a chance to see it a little bit of it this summer um uh where where exactly uh i believe as part of raw we're gonna do a little something mm -hmm. um that people will be able to see so uh 
yes, before we finally meet the public, I would love people to be involved in the the the, the handiwork of it. Uh huh. Yeah. Is that part of your um, understanding of the art? Is the process is also the art? I think. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I would say that like the you know, and I mean, when I think about like where what's the you know the desired sort of effect I would like to create for the audience, I think about like um you know for the for the last um year or so uh what sort of gotten me through is just long interrupted um times where i'm sewing and just the moment of like absorbing mm -hmm. in yourself in a in a in a task or in just sort of like a a somewhat um uh hypnotic activity uh so that that i guess is what made me really want to give that experience to other people because it's been so generous yeah. and, and um soothing for me wonderful well i don't sew but i would come and um learn how <laughs> <laughs> to hang out. <laughs> yeah that sounds great to have the COVID experience has been all kind of process and no product but to be able to sit down and actually just make make something mm -hmm. and, and ah we did it you know it'd be very delightful uh thank you so much Marmon D for talking thank and you. is there anything else you you want to say or um not right now great great to be <laughs> talking to you great to be um talking to you people who are seeing this and um uh come see us sometime bye thank you